In life we come to or we experience monumental moments that define or change our lives. Hello, Mr. Riviera? And as exciting or as challenging as they may be, those moments always come with choices at about the same magnitude. There were some struggles of losing everything and losing the life. Choices for the brave of heart who are willing to go against the common grain. The love I felt from Jesus just consumed me and push into the height of the uncharted or those rarely charted places. Hi, I'm Terry Copley. And yes, um, for the first 29 years of my life, I was a television actress and uh, enjoyed success in that. But at one point, um, I was doing a movie and God visited me and woke me up. And my life has never been the same. There's just absolutely nothing like being touched from God, Father, through Jesus Christ. And it's been 27 years now. Not, not the easiest years, but the greatest years of my life because I have transformed. I was once one girl, and now I'm another girl. And I am a daughter. I am a son. I am a son of the Most High God, so to speak. We'll talk about that later. But today I want to talk to you about something that is very meaningful to me. Um, you know, I've gone about my life and people will ask me, Terry, where have you been? What have you been doing? And I tell them I'm a Christian. I remember the last time I walked down the red carpet and the paparazzi were shooting their, all their cameras at me. And they said, Terry, Terry, what are you doing now? And I said, I'm working for Jesus. And I am. I'm living for Jesus. And one of the things that is the most, I have found the most difficult is telling people that I'm born again. And a lot of people will say to me, well, you're not like one of those born again. And I have to say to them, as a matter of fact, I am. I am born again. And I say, I'm bringing this understanding to you today. And with all of my heart, I want to express this to you because born again is not a religion. And it's not something that any of us need to be ashamed of. Being born again is the greatest thing that could ever happen to you or to anybody. I think there's so many aspects as to what being born again means. Most of it is not what the world has made it out to be. Being born again is being born of the Spirit. And we are spiritual people. You know, one of, one of the things, I'm just going to go off a little bit, but one of the things that upsets me the most as a Christian is that we diminish ourselves and we let the enemy and the powers of this world, the rulers, the princes of this world, even humans, um, come and and distort and to pervert and to make us take everything that God has given us that is the most precious and destroy it, make us feel ashamed of it or make us not want to touch it and fear it. So I come to you today boldly as a daughter of God who has a father in heaven and I have been taught by him and I don't say that lightly. It's taken me 27 years of walking through two major wildernesses and laying down my life and failing and, uh, you know, a lot. 
So I say that to you because we need to take back. We need to stand boldly for who we are. And, and who we are in the kingdom, in God's kingdom, in our kingdom, as sons of God, that you're going to hear a lot about the sons of God in this earth for this season, in this timing. But right now I want to share to you one very important aspect of what it means to be born again. And so if you have a Bible, if not, I'll just read it for you. I'm going to John 3, 3. And there it says, Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I say to you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. And that's a big deal. We cannot be transformed unless we can see our kingdom, our home. In Genesis 3.3, Uh, It says that Father says to them, Adam and Eve in the garden, of all the trees in the garden you can freely eat of, but of this tree you cannot eat of it, nor can you touch it. Don't even touch it, lest you die. Now this tree was put in the midst of the garden, and that's for a reason. The midst of your being is your core, this core place of you. The midst of your being is your heart. This is where God dwells when you're born again. The fruit and the seed of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, it comes into our heart and lives and abides in this core place. So God plants this tree in the midst of the garden, the tree of good and evil, and tells them, don't eat of this tree. Okay, just because... God gave us a will. We're not, you know, we're not robots. We're not little, you know, robots that are going to say, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, sir. He gave us a will to choose, to choose to love him. Because, I mean, you wouldn't even want robot children. None of us would. We'd want children with personalities, children that choose to love us. So Father did the same thing. So he had to give us one little place of a choice for us to choose. And unfortunately, Adam and Eve were tempted. So here it goes. The tree is in the mist of the garden. This mist means, the word mist means to sever. It's the middle part. It's the core. It's the heart. So what happened in this tree, lest you eat of it, your heart is severed from God. That's what happened to them. That was one of the first things that happened. Their heart was severed from God. The word tree means from the firmness. It means wood. It means plank. It means carpenter, which we'll get to. The root of the word tree means to fasten or to make firm. What? What fasten? Fasten what? To close your eyes shut. That's what happened. That's what happened in the tree, in the garden, the tree of good and evil. Their hearts were severed from God and their eyes were fastened shut. Ephesians 1, 17 through and 18, it says that God, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and in revelation in the knowledge of him. Number 18 says, and the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. The word for eyes there, because there's a lot of different meanings for the word eyes, depending on what it's being referred to. But the eyes here means vision. And the root of that word means is to gaze with your eyes wide open. God is a God of restoration. And Jesus came to bring restoration through being born again. Your eyes are now open. This is is different than just seeing. This is different than just 
normal, casual, visual seeing that we all see with. This is, this is um, a different kind of seeing. And the prominent root, the root in this thing, the prominent thing that it says, it, and the prominent dominating root of the sight in the garden was envy and jealousy. That was in the root of the tree of the good and evil, that the fruit that they partook of. Envy is the main fruit of that tree. Paul says that the eyes of your understanding might be enlightened. The eyes of your heart would be opened. Understanding is the ability to comprehend something deep. It's your, deep in your thoughts, in your imagination, through spiritual eyes. I know I know a lot of you say, oh, you know, if you're, if you're not saved, that you can close your eyes and you can visualize. It's not the same visual. This is, this is a familiar spirit. This is visualizing of your own will and conjuring, and we don't do that. This is visual sight, spiritual sight into the kingdom of God, into heaven, into your home where you once came from. And where, unfortunately, when Adam and Eve partook of the tree, where we died. Now we must be brought back to life again. Understanding is the ability to know absolutely. This happens through deep prayer, through worship, through meditation, through fixing your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. You fix your eyes there and you see him and you worship him and you stay there. And it takes a while. It takes a while to begin to see. But if you just push forth and if you believe and you're, it takes a, it takes a minute, but you start to see. Sometimes people see right away and it always aligns with the word of God. So he says, to have your understanding enlightened is to make you see, to make manifest, to experience through seeing. This is how you're transformed into the image of Christ, into a son of God on the earth, walking in the full manifestation of the spirit. This is the eyes that were firmly shut in the garden. This is that tree, the tree of good and evil. Okay, wait, wait, wait. So, let's go deeper. Let's go deeper into this tree. Ephesians 17 says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. What is this wisdom? Word wisdom here means clear. Clear. clear vision to see not with planks in your eyes that's why those planks have to be removed not to see dimly but clear vision to see revelation that the spirit of wisdom and revelation what is revelation revelation is disclosure that means that we as sons of God have the ability through walking in the spirit, seeing in the spirit as sons of God to have full disclosure of the heavenly realm. It's the action of making something new, of, of, of making something new or secret known on the earth. This is revelation of his word. This is bread from heaven. I promise you, I promise you, there is bread in heaven for us to partake of. I promise you that there is so much more 
than walking in this life as a mere man, as seeing just in the natural, and maybe just seeing according to your thoughts. There's so much more. There's so much more. Oh, boy. Also, revelation means to reveal. It's an open heaven. It's to, to conceal by a covering. And it's now to take off that covering. You know, it's funny because in the natural, it takes us a long time to get to know somebody. You know, you have to bond with them. And we have a lot of walls up of, you know, protections. And our hearts are jaded. Our hearts were severed from God. So, of course, they're jaded. But when you see in the spirit and you have a prophetic word for somebody, God shows you somebody, you instantly know them. You instantly have a love for them that you can't explain because you know them. That's what knowing is. The serpent said to the woman, God knows in Genesis 3, 5 that, that um, in the day that you eat of this, your eyes will be open and that you will know good and evil. Your eyes will be open. Okay, look. This is what we ate of. This is what we became. This is our spiritual sight that we see with. Okay? You shall be as gods. Okay? The word, this was an ordinary sense. Um, Satan is saying you shall be as gods. Well, he is. Satan acts as a god. He's not God. God is God. Satan acts as a roaring lion. <laughs> oh, I knew I was going to do that. Satan works as, acts as a roaring lion. Jesus is, Father is the lion of Judah. Knowing good and evil, good, knowing good, what is good, that meaning is good things, what is beautiful, what is the best, what is better. No wonder envy is at the root of that tree. Because we are constantly comparing what is better. I need to have this better bag. I need to have this better car. This is what our eyes are open to. It's humanism. It's pl uh, what is pleasure, prosperity. This is all in the word good at the tree, good and evil. Wealth, be well favored. Okay, the root is to, to make good, to be better. What is evil? Evil is bad. Evil naturally, morally, knowing adversity. Aff affliction, calamity, displeasure, distressed, grief, harm, heavy, heartfelt, ill-favored, marked. Are you ready for that one? Misery, wretchedness, wrong. Do we recognize this? In your life, are you living wanting to do better, wanting to have prosperity, wanting to have a, a better this, a better that, wanting to have the most beautiful? I know I did. I know that. I know I still battle with that to varying degrees. Do I know misery? Do you know misery? Do you know affliction? Do you know what it is to be sick, to have harm? This is what we partook of. This is what we traded, revelation, understanding. The eyes of our, of our heart being open for this, for this. Was Jesus a carpenter just because? just decided to be a carpenter? I think not. Carpenter is at the root of that tree, good and evil. As a young boy, Jesus worked with his father as a carpenter. His father taught him about trees. He, his father taught him how to chop down those trees. And the eyes of his understanding were opened. Every time he swung that axe head, he saw that tree. Every time he saw that tree fall, it was that tree. Every time he chopped that tree, it was a tree of good and evil. And as he chopped that tree, he saw the place where the nails in his hands.
hands would go. He saw the vast space from one end to the other where he would lose his breath and it would be taken from him. He felt the sword pierce in him as a hatred of man speared him when he was already dead. And then, and then, he saw your spiritual eyes open. He saw you comprehend the garden from where you once walked with the Father. And he saw you walking there once again with the Father. Walking in the cool of the day, in the spirit, in truth, restored, reconciled as a spiritual being. John 3, 6 says, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And this is just a portion of what it means to be born again. So, if anybody ever asks you again, are you born again? You tell them, I am born again of the Spirit of God. I am a spiritual being. My spiritual eyes are open. And I see my homeland. I see heaven on earth now. I can see the throne room. I can see the waterfalls. I can see the crystal mountains in paradise. Do you want to see? Let's pray. I'm asking any of you that don't know the Lord, come with us on this journey. Just let God touch you. Let him come into your heart that was once severed and hardened from him. And let him open the eyes of your understanding. You know. You already know there's not a man alive that doesn't know they're not a spiritual being in some form or another, whether it is in a dream or a vision, some kind of vision that, that you're, you're knowing that you're not just a mind and emotion. You know that there's another part of you, another dimension. And I'm asking you, will you open your heart today? Will you pray with me? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you and Father, I know that my eyes were shut. I know that I am a sinner. And I'm asking you now, Father, to forgive me of my sins. And Lord Jesus, to come into my heart and open the eyes of my understanding that I might see you, that I might comprehend you, that I might be restored to the kingdom of God, that I might be restored to my Father in heaven. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Help me to live this life as a new creation in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that today I am born again. In Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer with me, there's a little thing on, um, I think right above me, <laughs> has my email address. Could you just send me a little email? Let me know that you prayed that prayer with me today and that the eyes of your understanding are opened. Listen, it's a journey and it's a beautiful journey. Yes, it's hard because you're going to feel like the heavens are not open, but they are opened. They are open to you today. And there's a pressing in that we have to do. And I'm going to speak on that the next time, my, ne my next show. But it's possible because I've pressed through. And yes, I just still have a little bit. But you know what? It's a journey. It's a journey that for God to create us into sons of God again. And let me tell you something. The sons of God will be made manifest on this earth in these last days. And God is circling the heavens right now. And he's looking for those ones that are willing. Are you willing? Are you willing? 
Are you tired of just the mere life? I know you are. I know you are. Because I was and I had everything. It wasn't enough for me. And I know it's not enough for you. I know you want more. So come on this journey. Come into the spiritual place with the Lord. And don't be afraid. The Lord has you. And he has legions of angels that are right beside you to guide you. Thank you for watching today. And I hope that you'll join me again. All right. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>